Are you ready to rock? I'm ready. Alright. Uh, Marcus, can you not fart? Thanks, bro. What's cracking, guys? Omar Esop here, here with a very special guest. We're at Mark Bell's gym, super training gym, the strongest gym in the West. And, uh, you know, every time I come down here, people want to know what something. Are these pecs? These pecs don't belong on a middleweight. These pecs deserve respect. Ass chest. <laughs> the ass chest. And we got a. That's nothing. I come on here and people, when we do Q&As, there's always a reoccurring question, right? Uh, you guys probably know that Mark's brother, Chris Bell, did a documentary, Bigger, Stronger, Faster, uh, went into oh, yes, details. Yes. Oh, I know this film. Oh, yes. I know this film. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, quite, yeah, it's, hey. it's a classic. Um, that went into uh, steroids, uh, the, uh, the underside when it comes to sports, sports performance, the use, and you were one of the first people to be open about it. And so ever since then, people are always kind of soliciting you, like, yo, bro, like, it came out form. of the closet. Yeah, you came, and how does it feel? It feels wonderful. Do you feel like a new person? I feel uh, liberated. Liberated, yeah. and I see that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and after after you became liberated, people will always approach. Like remember we had that live podcast right. last time, and a kid literally that was sixteen came up and was like, "Are you going to talk about steroids?" Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, and so you I have people that come up to me all the time and they confess about it. They're like, yeah. "Hey, bro, like I'm glad you made that movie. Like, yeah, I, you know, I did a cycle back in high school or whatever. You know, so it's it's kind of cool because." It just gets people having a conversation a little bit more. Maybe the idea for today, talking actually about steroids, because you see a lot of people perhaps giving some misinformation out yeah. there, uh, either trying to sell this information, and you know that could really be bad for a lot of like young kids. First of all, I'd like yeah. to just kind of point out the fact that it is a drug. Yeah. You know, uh, steroids are they're illegal. Um, in most forms and most ways that you get them are legal. So it's it's just important to point out. I think a lot of people do know that. A lot of people are aware of that, but it's just. That is uh, something to consider uh, whenever somebody's talking about thinking about doing them. Um, I definitely think that uh, younger kids, um, especially anybody who's living at home, uh, you know, follow mom and dad's rules is all I can kind of say on that. Uh, I don't think that um, it'd be wise to even really consider them until you have developed a little bit more. And I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about uh, mentally <clears throat> as well as like spiritually, like just all the stuff in the gym. All the different things that encompasses being uh, between the ages of like 18 and like 24. There's still a lot of shit to figure out at those ages, and so uh, I would suggest that you try to become or wait until you're more mature uh, before you even think about that, before you even think about doing uh, performance enhancing drugs, before you try to enhance your performance. There should be some performance behind it. <laughs> right. Uh, you should hit some numbers. Yeah, yeah, there should be a little something behind it. Um, so, and a lot of times too, people that are considering them or people that are thinking about them, usually are the ones that end up doing them at some point. Um, and then just, you know, also, you know, recognize the fact that they can be dangerous. There are side effects, as you mentioned earlier, bitch tits. That's not something I really take lightly. Like, do you want your boobs to kind of <laughs> sag and turn into, uh, what happens is, is uh, there's a, like a deposit of like estrogen that, uh, that builds up and you end up with like a kind of a extra nipple almost. Remember yeah. Mike talked about the yeah. third nipple? Yeah. So if your nipple is here, right, which my little guy's right there, then you'll end up with a hardening kind of around or near the nipple, which is just disgusting, right? There's uh, <laughs> you there's all surgically of, removed too, Mark, is that? The yeah, people get them surgically removed. Right. There's, um, you can take anti-estrogens, but the point is, is once you get into an altered state, uh, it's gonna change you kind of forever. It's gonna change your body. The changes um, can be reversed in some ways, but a lot of times you gotta take drugs to get those changes to reverse. So you gotta take more drugs. Now that's something you, that people should know up front. That's something that people should understand going into it. Um, and then even, even from there, there's gonna be a time where you're gonna want some sort of exit strategy, just like you would in business, uh, sometimes in a relationship, right? Uh, depending, depending on where things are going. I have plans tonight. Yeah, you, yeah, you always wanna try to think about the future. What are the next four or five years gonna look like? And if you want to try to be a monster and you want to try to be a world record setting power lifter or you're trying to be a uh, the world's strongest man competitor, world's strongest man is probably a better uh, thing, thing to, to, to talk about for this because okay. there's not really a, uh, a drug tested federation that's, uh, that people hold in high regard. Right, and so if you want to compete in a strong man then that's yeah. what you got to use. Oh yeah, you're, you're forced. Yeah. I mean, and, and then in power lifting though, uh, you, know, you do have like something like the USAPL slash IPF, which is a drug tested federation. So at least there's somewhere for people to go that don't want to ever make that decision to take steroids. Now, Mark, let me ask you this, using yourself as a personal example, uh, when did you start and what made you decide that you want to start using anabolic steroids? 
Um, I started them when I was probably about I was about 26 years old. Um, I've been lifting since the age of 12. Um, 14 years of lifting. Yeah, a long, a long, a long road of lifting. Um, I wouldn't say I was maxed out. You know, sometimes people say they max maximize their potential. Or we're gonna get that photo. The, the photo you showed me when you were doing the wrestling. Right. That's actually like before you started using right. it. And that's actually, a lot of people would consider that just a great physique. But I'm not even a proponent of them so much as I'm just somebody that has used them. Yeah, and uh, is open about it. To, to, do, to do some of the things that I want to do, some of the things that uh, make me satisfied and kind of complete me as, as uh, you know, some of the journey that I'm trying to, trying to go through. Um, but, you know, each person is going to be a little bit different on their goals and on what they want to do. Uh, steroids are not the answer for everybody. Each person is going to be very different on their decisions on, on how they feel about it. Now, Mark, what did you, because we said then today, maybe we Oh, you said about why. About so why. I started at 26. Yeah. And the why part was uh, I was doing pro wrestling at the time and I just wanted to be bigger. Right. Now, pro wrestling is sort of the excuse, but the real reason is I've always loved strength. I've always loved strength training. I've always loved powerlifting. And I always kind of knew that I would go back to powerlifting at some point. So the real reason was to powerlift and to be stronger and to be bigger. Yeah. And now, when you first started, what did you actually use then? Uh, first cycle I ever did, I used testosterone and I used uh, Decker Durablin. Now, I will say that I do not, I'm not a chemist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a doctor by any means and You're I don't just know. Your experience. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't know uh, all the different chemical uh, names and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I also took Dianabol. But the first, uh, that's like a stack. It took three different things. Right. Uh, we used to say in, in, in pro wrestling circuit that if you weren't on three things that you were natural. Right. Which is kind of funny, but it's just our stupid lingo. Anyway, um, you know, I don't pretend to know all the different details about all these different substances. Like I mentioned earlier, there are definitely uh, side effects to steroids. Uh, but a steroid, if you were to have an entire bottle of steroids, let's say, a, uh, they, they come in 10 milliliter or 20 milliliter, in some, some cases much larger, but normally a 10 or 20 milliliter bottle, right? Let's say you have a 20 milliliter bottle of testosterone, and let's say each milliliter represents 200 milligrams uh, per, you know, um, per cc, right, or per, per milliliter. Um, if you were to take that entire thing, that would represent a lot, I'm not gonna do the math, or try to pretend to do the math, but if you took that entire bottle, it would not have any sort of negative impact on you other than the fact that that shit would hurt really bad. It's the amount of injection that you're taking, just like if you injected any other drug. Right. Um, but it's not gonna affect you as if you overdosed on like Oxycontin. Okay. It's not gonna affect you as if you took a thousand milligrams of caffeine. Right. It's not gonna have any impact on you uh, immediately. It might even take, um, it might even take several days, five, six, seven, eight, 10 days for that to really uh, do much of anything. And even at that point, it's not gonna like make you wild. It's not gonna give you like a euphoria. It's not gonna make you like, oh, it's not gonna do some of the, you know, some of the movies they kind of show you like. That's a lot of movies. Here, take this bag of steroids. Here, guy, yeah. Yeah, the guy will take it and he'll be all fired up and he'll like beat his wife or whatever. <laughs> yeah. so. The Ben Affleck film. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. I don't want to put that on the screen, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really do uh, so, any of those sort of things. So those are some of the misconceptions. What other misconceptions do you feel people have about just steroids in general? You know, I think people automatically kind of assume because of what they see, especially with uh, power lifters, uh, that it'll just automatically make you big and bloated. Yeah. But you also have the other side of the fence, which is like track and field. You have. Um, I don't want to say that like Hussein Bolt does them. I'm just using him as an example. But right. People know the body type. Yeah. Um, or here's a better example. Rather than throw him under the bus because he's never been, yeah. he's never tested positive. So he, doesn't, tested positive. he doesn't deserve that. Um, Anderson Silva, who fights in the UFC, Anderson Silva has been busted for performance enhancing drugs. Yeah. And I think everybody's seen his body type and seen what he looks like. Uh, other guys have been busted for it. Shale Sonnen, who's also in the UFC. I'm not just picking on the UFC, I'm just using some of these guys as example because they're body types that you probably have seen. Yes. Now also, uh, Mark the Hammer Coleman from the, one of the greatest uh, documentaries of all time called uh, The Smashing Machine, uh, he also uh, was on performance enhancing drugs. And so there are three very different styles and three very different uh, body types. You got uh, Shel Sonnen who's somewhere in the middle, you got Anderson Silva who's definitely a uh, Definitely like a tall, skinny guy and super skinny legs. Um, and then you also have uh, Mark Coleman, who's just like a jacked up yeah. looking power lifter, bodybuilder. Who he was just, huge, yeah. Yeah, he just smashed on everybody, just tore everybody apart. And that's who you'd expect 
a steroid to do for you, but there's a lot of different types of steroids and there's a lot of different types of things that they can do. There's a, there's a lot of different types of steroids, there's a lot of, even, even beyond the different types of steroids, you have a lot of different uh, types of performance enhancing drugs. You have um, a diff different hormones, you got growth hormone, you got insulin. Um, the list of the things uh, that, I think they're called peptides, a lot of people call them peptides. There's like IGF-1, and again, I'm not a chemist, I don't know all the different things that go into some of these different products, but uh, something like insulin can help you recover from every single workout that you do. So, you know, you have that post-workout uh, window, the anabolic window, yeah, to stuff in, anabolic, yeah. yeah, to stuff in as many carbs as you can. Well, now you, your your anabolic window is in uh, is in the form of insulin. Right. You take that insulin, and you take a uh, you take you know, hundred milligrams of carbs or whatever it is. It helps shuttle that into the muscle cells. Helps you recover from your workout. And bodybuilders have been using it for years and years for for that sort of thing. And now, you know, bodybuilding is is sort of the NASCAR of of its uh, like genre because. The reason why I say NASCAR is like a lot of the safety things that are now in your car today are in in your car because of like NASCAR. Right. You know, the certain different positions of the mirrors and the different how many mirrors you have, uh, the the harness for your um, for your seatbelt, things like that are now in your car. And with bodybuilding, the no carb diets, um, the low fat diets, the prepping for a show, those are all things that are now being used by regular people. They're also being used by uh, movie actors and actresses and stuff. And then Furthermore, you have the drugs pouring into movies like Fight Club and, and things like that where people are trying to get in shape uh, to be jacked and tan for a film. They're, right. they're trying to uh, kind of fast track that, if you will, and get in shape quickly for something. So they'll use insulin, they'll use testosterone, they'll use growth hormone. Or they will, they will say, I didn't use any steroids for that. Of course. And they use, use growth hormone and insulin. And they could actually technically say that they didn't, I guess, use steroids. So it's, in ways it's more prevalent than people think. The other thing you said, a misconception, is that you don't have to be this jack dude to actually be using performance enhancing drugs. There's many different things that you right. can use. Right, it, it, they're not automatically gonna make you weigh 250 or 300 pounds. Uh, there's plenty of people that are 170 pounds that use them. There's plenty of people that are 200 pounds that use them. There's a lot of different body types. Uh, the main drug that you hear uh, a ton about is Trend. Whenever somebody posts a picture, somebody posts a picture of them flexing or uh, the uh, elevator selfie. Yeah. Elevator selfie is this one. Yeah. It's good, and it's good because you can use the shirt to get the correct lighting. <laughs> right. You know. But the el the old uh, elevator selfie. Every time you get a good pose, everyone yells Trend. Yeah. Or steroids, but usually Trend pops up, and Trend, uh, Trendbolone is a uh, steroid that uh, basically will help increase. This is a, this is a, this is my pitch, right? You guys, do. <laughs> hey guys, right, right guys. here, yeah. right here. Uh, Trendbolone is a uh, steroid uh, that increases strength um, and also will help you get leaner. Yeah, it's one of the few that you'll actually take and actually notice yourself getting leaner without. People are going to flip out, people are going to get all excited uh, without really a lot of changes to your diet. I don't know why it does that, I don't know the function of any of that, but that's what it fucking does, it's pretty cool. Right. Uh, so that would be, what would that drug be for then? That would be for uh, people that are in a weight class driven sport, such as powerlifting, such as Olympic wrestling, such as Olympic lifting. Um, so there are a lot of different sports that it could be used for, where you're trying to keep your weight confined to a specific weight. Uh, you're, trying, you're trying not to get too huge or too bulky uh, to restrict movement, um, or you're just trying not to gain too much weight, but you're still trying to get stronger. Now Mark, uh, one of the other things I think you did mention before, but maybe to get into is the fact that even if you do use, because some people that do want to use, uh, they're probably looking for a shortcut or whatnot. Right. You still got to put in the fucking work. Like oh, when yeah. you're, you're gonna bench press 600 pounds, it's coming up. That's not like oh, because I take trend, bro. I just bench 600. <laughs> right. I would also just say like you know uh, the the underlying like bro message to this all. You know, can't we all get along? Yeah. I mean, you do your thing, I do mine, and uh, you have your results that make you happy, that satisfy your needs and your goals and they, they make you feel better about yourself. And then I have my goals too that are just doing the same exact thing, uh, just in a different way, uh, maybe under some different rules. Um, but really, uh, the, the main thing is to realize that there's something that you can take from everybody, something you can learn from everybody. So just because this dude over here is taking stuff and he's maybe open about it, or maybe, maybe he's even not talking about it and he's super jacked, 
Uh, there's, and, but the guy deadlifts like 800 pounds or something like that. There's still a ton that could be learned from that person. It would be foolish to think that that guy all of a sudden, you know, he woke up one day, he's like, I'm gonna take steroids. I'm gonna post this 800 pound deadlift to Instagram and I'm gonna be famous. Right. You know, the guy, there, obviously there's been years and years of training. Most likely the guy deadlifted 700 pounds without ever taking anything and then decided to take it to the next level because for some reason he had a hard on about deadlifting 800 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Who knows why? Yeah. Because none of this is own. None of this shit really does a whole lot for us other than just self improvement. Again, that's kind of the reason why. I just suggest stay in your lane and don't worry too much about what the other person's doing. I think that's that's pretty much it. Again, just uh, you know, realize that they steroids can be very dangerous, and uh, make sure you're going to research and make sure you do some homework. Communicate with people that have taken them before. There's thousands and thousands of people that have taken them before. I think when they originally had written the uh, underground steroid handbook, they were shocked at how many they sold. Dan Duchesne, I think, was the one of the original writers, I think Bill Phillips was part of it as well, and they sold like a few hundred thousand of yeah. them. And it kind of shocked everybody about how much, uh, how much people were really dying for this information. So the information is out there, especially through the interwebs, uh, but make sure you're communicating with people that know what they're doing. And nowadays, there's even a much safer route. You can actually go to a doctor. Uh, for you young guys, you might be a little bit screwed. You might have to wait until you're a little bit older. TRT. Nowadays, yeah, nowadays you can get some TRT and actually uh, get it uh, not only a little bit safer, but legally. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for watching. Mark, thanks for being on the channel. All right. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video. Where can people follow you? People can follow me on my YouTube channel, which is right here. I think you'll be right, right there, right there. YouTube.com backslash supertraining06 and also my Instagram is at Mark Smelly Bell. Thank you.